So if I was looking at a problem like this, what I would focus on would be this power, okay? That's what I'm gonna wanna simplify first. Let's go ahead and rewrite this out. All right, so there's a couple of properties, and if you remember, you know, one of the big reasons why we spend so much time simplifying logarithmic expressions, so therefore we can realize this and say, hey, this is kind of too complicated. This is too much is going on. I wanna simplify this. If I'm going to go ahead and solve an equation that looks like this, I'm gonna to wanna to be able to simplify this. So what the first thing I recognize is I can apply the power rule. I can take this number in front, right, this being multiplied, and I can rewrite that as a power of my argument. Okay, so now you can simplify that, and remember the power rule of exponents, x squared to the cube power is gonna be an x to the sixth. And now, if you remember the quotient properties for logarithms, whenever you have a logarithm minus another logarithm, you can rewrite that as the quotient of your two arguments. Okay, and again, I'm just working on this step by step here, so now I can simplify this to ln of x cubed. All right, so that's kind of important here, so I'm gonna go ahead and now simplify this to see what we get. So we have e raised to the ln of x cubed equal to an ln e to the 16th property. Okay. So actually, before I even write that in there, I think hopefully you can recognize that, you know, when you have ln of, remember that has a base e of e raised to 16 power, that is another um, logarithmic property here. We can just simplify that to 16. Okay, so now I have a much simplified exponential equation, right? And if you were to look at this, probably this original problem, you probably might get like overwhelmed or a little confused. So that's why it's so important. And if you notice, like I did my work over here cause I wanted just to focus on, I wanted to, you know, not trying to do everything in my head and you can do it, but I'm just telling you, that's where like I make my mistakes. That's where I see a lot of my own students make their mistakes when they try to just do something in their head rather than just like writing on a side sheet of paper, right? So just take your time. Don't feel like you always have to rush, you know, in something like this. There was a lot of steps that I did. Obviously, as I was teaching, I'm explaining it, but I wanna make sure you're following through on everything there. Okay, so now we have e raised to ln of x um, cubed equals 16. So I need to solve for x, right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to solve for x. So to find the value of x, right, whenever it's in the power, you've got to take the log of both sides. Now again, what log do we take? Do we take the natural log? Do we take log base 10, log base 5? We want to always take it as the same base. And remember, natural log has a base of e. So now I have ln of e raised to the ln of x cubed is equal to an ln of 16. Okay, now hopefully you recognize here, this is again another rule of exponents. Whenever you have log base e of e, right, and that, that's raised to the power, then that's just going to equal to that power. And then have, wait a minute, uh, x cubed, I don't remember x cubed. I, oh my God, are you serious? Do you guys see the mistake I did? <laughs> I was dividing x6, x is six divided by x squared. That's, you don't divide them, right? What's the rule of exponents? You subtract the powers. When you have an exponent raised to another power, you multiply. When you have exponents divided by another x, you subtract the powers. So I am an idiot. Ah, <sighs> that is uh, things that happen though, ladies and gentlemen. So that's gonna be an x to the fourth. Um, so therefore, these are all x to the fourth. And oh man, okay, there you go. So be careful. Um, so now I'm gonna have an ln x to the fourth is equal to an ln of 16. So now what we can do is apply the one-to-one -one property, right? Whenever we have a logarithm equal to a logarithm, again, both are isolated logarithms with the same base. They have to be isolated and they have to have, some, have the same base. Remember that, because that's a really common mistake students will make is you apply the one-to-one um, -on -one property when the, the logarithms are not isolated or the bases are different. But now I can just say x to the fourth is equal to a 16. So now if I'm gonna take the fourth root, so undo the fourth power, right? Just like you undo squaring, you take the square root. Or undo the fourth power, we're going to take the fourth root. Now, how do you simplify the fourth root of 16? And just remember also, this is plus or minus, right? Um, so since it's a even, we have to do that plus or minus. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as the fourth root of x to the fourth, those are inverse operations, so that's gonna undo it. So it's gonna be plus or minus. And then now what I'm gonna do is say the fourth root of, how do you take the fourth root of 16? Well, the best thing I would recommend doing is again, using your exponents um, to be able to rewrite 16 as two to the fourth power. Then you say x is equal to plus or minus a two, right? Because the fourth root of two to the fourth are gonna undo each other. So now we have x equals plus or minus two, but we have to be careful. We always wanna check for extraneous solutions. Extraneous solution would mean it's a solution to your equation, to your final, it's a solution to your answer, but it's not a solution to your original equation. What I want you to recognize here is negative two. You cannot plug a negative two into the ln of x because you can only take the logarithm of positive values. So therefore, x equals negative two is what we call an extraneous solution. So therefore, our only answer in this case is gonna be x is equal to a positive two. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. It gave you some value. And if it did, I know you're going to enjoy the next video.